All right, so we're going to go over the overactive and underactive muscles of NASM. Yeah, it's, I'm just using the study guide, so I just. You'll get it. You'll get it thanks. easy. The study guide, it makes it cake. Think about, think about if you're like, I mean, people, if I'm always on this computer, right, which I'm not, mm -hmm. we're just going to be right here, right? So what would be. What on this guy, you got to think about putting yourself into that position. What's going to be an overactive muscle? We got the upper traps, right? Yeah. So why do you think the upper traps? Rhomboids? Uh, rhomboids, no, that's not going to be an overactive muscle on this. Uh, so Here. upper traps. Um... So we'll go over the, so I'm going to go over the top five ones. All right. All right. The traps, psoas, adductor magnus, the latissimus dorsi, and your gastroc. So those are the five up, those are the five overactive is what we're going to go over. Okay. So your upper traps. So a lot of people, like a lot of my clients right here, they're overactive in their traps because they're either stressed or they, have something going on, a lot of them, because when we're um, in a sympathetic, not a parasympathetic, which is a calming nervous system, sympathetic system, we're gonna be right here. We're in a protective space, right? We're on the defense. But when we're parasympathetic, we open up up here, we relax, our traps drop. So I have a lot of the people that I work with, I actually have them hang on a pull-up bar over there, right? So I have them hang and I'll show you real quick. Just like that. So I just let them hang and I have them shake their head back and forth. I have them breathe into their chest. I have them breathe into their back, their posterior ribs, like that thoracic spine that opens up. Because if we look at if we look at this guy, your thoracic spine and your ribs, they go like that, right? So your scapula has to work around those. So it's kind of like a big cylinder where your scapula, you have that scapular plane where it has to work around it. So when our upper traps get uh, overactive, that kind of tightens and locks down that area where they want to work. Right there. Does that make sense? So by having people kind of hang and uh, just relax and I have them shake their neck because you can't flex your traps if your neck is, is shaking, right? If you're going back and forth, turning it. Because if you try to try to flex and then do that and hold that upper trap, it's going to kind of release to be able to turn. So that's your, that's one of your overactive muscles. All right, next one is gonna be the psoas. So I just got a new computer and I'm trying to figure out how to work this guy on my magic pad. There we go. There we go. Oh, too close, Helen. Watch out. Greg got it. <laughs> so your psoas, right? Psoas and your iliacus are right here. I know your psoas, iliacus, sorry. Which they turn into one muscle eventually, right? So you got your iliacus iliacus in your psoas and if we look your psoas is attached to all five of your lumbar spine so when you have back pain and you have a really overactive psoas what do you think that's going to do to your spine because you're supposed to have that a lot of people think like you're supposed to have a flat spine but you have that lodoric curve in it right 
So that's going to kind of tighten down and lock down. How do you think you would get an overactive psoas? Helen? Uh, isn't it when they, a lot of people have that, the back pain and they go to the chiropractor for, and the chiropractor says it's their psoas or no? Yeah. I mean, but what, what actions would cause a tight uh, pick, picking over. something up and not, and not bending properly. I could. Another it one. You sit in for too long. Yeah. When you sit, good or job. Same position. When you sit in that, sh that shortened position, right? Cause if we look. Oh. Right here, our psoas is right here. So it's kind of in a shortened position, right? But if I stand up, we're gonna lengthen it out right there. So if you're sitting all day, it's gonna stay in that position, right? It's gonna stay right here, just hanging out. And then when, have you ever sat for a long time and then you go to stand up? Then you're like, oh my gosh. That is so tight, or you've been driving the car and it just, you ever get out of a car and then you're like, oh, this sucks, this, and you gotta stretch it out, you gotta move, kind of march a little bit, get it, get it working. Right, Helen, I can't tell. Anybody else feel that way? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is, are those like your hip flexors? Yeah, those are those are one of your hip flexors. I mean, we got bum, bum, bum. other hip flexors as well. Hip flexor, hip flexor, hip flexor. So yes, I mean, those are I guess what most people would consider your hip flexors. Um, any questions on the psoas? It's for the psoas major and minor. Yeah, and your iliacus right here. Right. Major, minor. Iliacus. Um, what's like your go-to, Travis, for like the best? And of course, there's a lot of ways you could stretch it, but what's your go-to? Like with the traps, how you did the dead hang? What's your go-to uh, for dead that? Hang? So with the traps, the dead hang and bringing anterior and posteriorly, getting breath up in there and kind of wiggling your shoulders around is really good. Uh, for the psoas, um, I like to do, have you ever done the couch stretch? Oh, so, right here. It's kind of getting set up for a Bulgarian. Right there. And we stretch, squeeze your glute, and that's going to drive that hip forward and stretch everything right here up, right? Because if we think about it, oh, if they're flexors and then we're extending them, it's a nice stretch right there. But you don't want to lean back. We want to be in, uh, in a space where we can flex our butt. Let me go this way. So right here, uh, down. So if we lean back, we're not doing anything. But if we squeeze our butt right here, you're driving those forward. So engage your butt, squeezing that butt, your glutes. You're going to feel that stretch up front. And now the purpose of having the knee flex, the because I mean, I've done something very similar to that, except I have my foot down flat on the floor when I do that type of stretch. But by having the knee in that flex position, it's just adding even more to that stretch, right? That right there's the purpose of the knee flexion? Uh, yeah, knee flexion, that's that's exactly what it is. I mean, you're just okay. taking. Perfect, thank you're, you. You're lengthening the position of your iliacus. Like, those would be like, real. that's a good quad stretch too. Yes, you can stretch your quads that way. Uh, let's see. Next one, adductor magnus. I just learned a really good one from Chris the other day for your adductor magnus. Where are you at? I can never find. Where are you at? 
There we are. Can't see on this. 